and explaining how he was bitten by your job. Well, that's the thing is, it was just ironic that this guy who was really indirectly responsible for having put millions of people into thinking about sharks in a very mm. negative way, mm. got bit by a shark himself. And shark bites are tremendously rare. I mean, it doesn't happen very often. It, mm. It's, uh, I mean, more well, people get struck by lightning uh -huh. and then got bitten mm. by sharks, mm. you know. But he's one of the guys that got bitten by a shark. It's, it's ironic, <laughs> you know, that... Well, anyhow, then uh, I try to turn it on about uh, thinking about his own life, you know, when he was making such things. And then about after 20 minutes, I found out that my tape wasn't running. Oh. Then I, I said, oh, very nice. Uh, look, I just found out my tape is not running. I said, why, why, why do you think it's nice? <laughs> I said, because now I don't need to follow that line of thought. Right. Huh? I can start new. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> then, we, then we had some more discussion about half an hour or so. And then at the end, um, I uh, recited my uh, AP news. And mm. then he was good. He was being so much angry with me. Uh, because I explained slowly, slowly about you know what he is doing and um, about about the American uh, scene, mm -hmm. and um, then he he ran away. <laughs> That's it. Huh? <laughs> then uh, a, a few days later, I I phoned. I wanted to speak to that uh, what is his name, Eichwort or something like this. He made this Blues Brothers movie, a very uh, lasting movie. Oh uh, yeah, you mean the director of the movie? Eichwort, huh? Is his name? No, it's not the same. Let me think. Damn, I just saw it the other night. Lance, Lan, Lansing, Lan. Yes, there was one. Land something. But, well, anyhow. Well, that's one of the guys anyway. I mean, that's, there are several people involved in making the movie, but I'm talking about the director. Uh -huh. John Landis. Yes, this Landis, but he was not there. This was the actor. His name is Eichwort or something. You're talking about one of, the, one of the actors? Yes. Well, well John, one of the actors was John Belushi, Aykroyd. Aykroyd. Yeah, Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know him. He's good. Yeah. He's a friend. And then what did these stupid people do? They said, well, uh, you have uh, uh, no permission to come to us anymore. <laughs> you, you are forbidden to enter our houses. Oh, oh so he you must have been at Universal. <laughs> Universal, right? At Universal Studios? Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's just in printer, so I think you started thinking about all that now. The most interesting thing was that uh, he said, well, I'm feeling too much flying. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And then I asked him, well, do you know that uh, people uh, feel uh, flying? Uh, it is a natural history tour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he started from a natural history tour. Oh my goodness, what is this now? The alternative scene is coming to catch me. And then when I went downstairs, I got to the, to the um, elevator. And he was running after me, but he had to go to the airport very quickly. And now he was seeing that I'm standing on the elevator. There was no second one. Now, to face me <laughs> for two minutes or one minute in the elevator alone, this was too much for him. Mm -hmm. So he ran down the staircase. And by the way, when he came downstairs, by chance, my elevator also came downstairs. Oh, so I, I went outside. There you were. I saw him again. <laughs> just coming facing me. Yeah? And I said, listen, man, uh, uh, one to sometimes, uh, walking is like flying. <laughs> right. right. So it was very nice. So you don't know what you're going to do. I like him, I mean, because he's man and I like I like men, I like human beings. Yeah, so sure. He's a, he's a, he must be okay. But anyhow, it's... Um, so that's my uh, only because about this uh, taking. Mm. Where are you from? Very interesting question. <laughs> I was, I was, yes, I was starting. I mean, right now. I mean, currently. Uh, it's not about time, you know. Oh well. well I mean. I'm just coming from the bar, but recently we have been in Frankfurt. Oh, I see Frankfurt. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Heidelberg. Heidelberg is a nice place. We went to a to try to to the possibility to play the Berlin. The Heiligerberg up there? Yes. We've been, we and visited up there. Yeah, and uh, the, the mayor didn't no. have any permission. No, we've asked, we've tried, we even tried it before in 72. Yeah. We visited there in 72 yeah. and went up there to look around and uh, the Tinkerstetter. Tinkerstetter. I have a good, good memory. Yeah. Uh, it's, well, it's an interesting spot. Yeah, yeah. Very powerful. Like a spot of power, yeah, you know, and uh, it's, it's interesting that, uh, well, it was, it's just part of, uh, you know, the, the 
esoteric life of Germany, you know, which is an interesting place for that. Yeah. Right. A lot of power has been pumped into that place. Yeah. Right, I'm certain we couldn't hurt it any. <laughs> It'd be interesting to play there, yeah. Well that was that's been well, always that's always been a fantasy of ours, you know, to play well, that's why we played at the Great Pyramid. Same sense. Yeah. A few days after you played there I went to the station in Frankfurt and and there was a guy standing there with some very strange head. <laughs> and then I, I I started to talk to him and said, I'm in trouble, I cannot get my uh, my, my uncle and uh, I don't know where to stay. So I took him along to one head shop and Based. made him uh, uh, rest there. And then he came next day to my house and explained me that he has been in Palestine and uh, he came from Egypt somewhere. He must have been in, uh, in uh, at, at this spot when you have been there. Yeah. He was telling some, uh, it was long ago, eight years ago or so, so I don't know, the, I don't remember the details. But it was quite an incident. <laughs> he just came from that trip and um, uh, so there has been always some kind of line. And then I was very, very uh, amused in a certain way, in a positive way, I mean, when you made this uh, um, I mean, I amused mean, not the right word. I mean, it, I mean, it is. Uh, I was very much. Uh, I liked it. Huh? Yeah. I, I found it very lovely huh? mm -hmm. when you made booze for Allah. Oh, glad you liked because, it. Because you know, I'm I'm, I'm Muslim. Huh? Uh, it was very. Oh, good. Yes, yeah, I'm no fanatic because there's much problems about Islam. The people, well. real Islam is peace and love, and uh, you know the, That's the, the basic idea of life is, uh, is uh, nice. Uh, Nice thinking and nice developing and evolution right. for everybody without discrimination of anything. Yeah, I, I but think these I, people, these mullahs, well, <laughs> that's the same problem with Christianity. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody takes too small of a viewpoint, mm. and um, well, you know, I mean, it's a very did human meet, problem. Mm. Yeah. Did you meet Dylan after? Uh, he, he, he sure. I just, uh, in fact, not about a month and a half, about two months ago, I mm. I played with him. Oh, he's still yeah, thinking on about stage. He, he was touring. Yeah. He invited me to come down to the theater and play, uh, you know, and so I came down and played, I played about a half a set, about a set with him. And I had a great time, and, and he's just fine, you know. It's uh, mm -hmm. his uh, Christian thing I didn't ask him about, and he didn't mm -hmm. volunteer anything mm -hmm. to me about it, but mm -hmm. um, the people that he's traveling with uh, are are also Christians like himself, and I guess, and, uh, and I feel that you know, I mean, my feeling is that uh, he's entitled to go through his changes, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. You don't know what he will do in, uh, yeah. after one, maybe he changed for something else. Well, I, 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 don't him, I, I don't see him, I don't see him, although his experience, his, his Christian experience is very much, uh, very much a part of the current charismatic Christianity thing, you know what I mean? Yes. Which is really, that is to say that he's experienced what he feels is direct contact with Jesus, you know. Uh, with Jesus? Uh, yeah. With God. He's yeah. regarding Jesus Just and Jesus. God. Well, I don't know, you know, what the, what, you know, I don't know what the refinements are there, yeah, but yeah. that spirit which is called um, Jesus, you know. It's a strange thing, I mean, I don't know, really know what to make of it, and the, the only thing that, uh, the only thing that it's hard for me to accept about on any level about any about that whole idea is just that just the exclusivity you know what I mean mm -hmm. that you if, that you're only right if you're a Christian you know mm -hmm. what I mean I, I don't like that way of thinking I, think I don't like that exclusive yeah what, I think what what you um, what you moan at uh, is um, that that uh, the idea of unity which is comprising uh, uh, everything. Huh? But, but this is limited to yeah. a certain idea. Yeah, huh? you can't what, do that. Huh? You know, but it does not mean that that uh, that uh, that uh, there is an uh, a level existing which is uh, uh, available for everything. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Well, I mean, you're, you're a philosopher. <laughs> well, my feeling is that. You understand my point? I mean, yeah. uh, no, how can it be? In, what I mean, I mean it can only be that everything that is is, you know, I mean, oh. you know, I don't think it's right to, I don't think that somebody can say consciously that just by virtue of an idea, yes. they are more right than something else oh. is, you know. What do you mean the different levels of reality and different ideas? 
uh, leading to a certain conclusion. Well, I see, yeah, I think a certain amount of the whole religious battling, you know, that goes on, the religious wars, oh. so to speak, are fundamentally... The exchange of patterns, instead, yeah, of, instead of living something. Yeah, and, and they're not so much, uh, and, and they're, 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 it's like, Religion has a tendency to exclude things from reality, you know what I mean? It's mm. like, the only reason you could find it possible to, the only reason that, like a religious reason, reason to do away with someone, mm. you know, is like, uh, the reason you can do that, you can accept that idea, is because they don't exist properly, you know what I mean? Like to a Christian, a non-Christian is like a non-person, mm. you know, or not part of reality. Mm. You know what I mean? It's I mean it's the kind of thinking that that all religions have. They they want to they want to command reality on some level. You know, mm. I mean, was one. I think it's too small. It's just too small for me. Those ideas are just too small I for me. I try to understand. Jim Morrison was one doing a, a, a very I mean a, well a song. Um, it started and it's still in my mind uh, due to certain reasons. Yeah. Um, Hello, I love you. Won't you tell me your, your name? Hello, I love you. Let me drop in your game. Mm -hmm. You remember that? Oh you, yeah. You, you, I think this is this is this shows something about uh, uh, about the development of uh, of uh, uh, consciousness uh, amongst uh, Western people. The idea that that uh, we this idea of sharing, like Ram Das for example, he always says, "I'm sharing with you." Uh, he's not saying follow the path or do this or that, but I'm sharing with you experience, yeah. isn't it? And this is a uh, way of... Uh, I think that's helpful, uh, you know, I mean, I, I think that's a, that is no inclusive, you know, yeah. whatever includes the most yes, is, yes, exactly. is, is going to yeah. get my vote, you exactly. know what I mean? Yes. Whatever yes. includes yes. everybody, yes. everything, you know, yes. it's just that, you know, whatever it is, like biological wisdom, whatever, whatever organic yes. wisdom there is yes. that, that um, And makes us who we are, you know. I mean, uh, whatever whatever it is that operates on that level is is not mincing words. You know what I mean? It's not it's not our ideas that make us real. You know, I mean, it's uh, no matter what we think, we we still uh, we still have what we, what nature has given us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Our cells, our blood goes through our veins, our hearts beat, we breathe. You know. We, we live, you know, uh, and it's not by virtue of our ideas, it's not what we think that mod modifies that in any real way. Uh, the, the, this idea that, that uh, we, we shouldn't uh, think longer that we stay in that room, but we should be in the room. Well, that would be good, <laughs> but I, you know, <laughs> it, but the, then on the other hand, it, it, it leaves you with, uh, here's this complex apparatus, uh, consciousness, You know, mm. Consciousness, which is very mm. complex, mm. it's a complex idea. Mm. And why? Uh, I mean, life clearly wants to have more to it than just to exist. Mm. I mean, if uh, if the all, you know, the all wanted to develop just something that would live and um, didn't care whether it thought or not, you know what I mean? You mean that the existence that the existence of people should be accepted? Well, more than that. I mean, I think there's more to it than that. But I don't know what it is. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, I'll say this: that I don't have an answer. You know, I don't have answers to these. These are questions of mine. You know. Do you, do you know? Uh, uh, do you know Conference of the Birds? Did you read it? Con me? Conference of the Birds. No, I haven't. I haven't read it. Uh, I should get a copy for you. It's an uh, it's an it's English translation available, and uh, a lot of people have done music on it also. Oh, really? Uh, well, who, 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 whose work is it? Uh, actually, it's a work of uh, Islamic music. Oh, from I see. The 11th century. Oh, too much. And um, it is describing the journey of the birds who are who are uh, looking for the hidden king, the uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, so they are they are gathering, and uh, each bird is trying to excuse himself that he cannot uh, go on the walk on the on the path. Oh, I he see. Got, uh, right. And one says, oh, "Look, I, I got my family here," and the other says, "This and that." Right. So and then they are they are electing, so to say, the peacock. No, not the peacock. The uh, whoop. What is whoopy? Whoopy. Whooping crane. No, not not crane. Uh, 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 Hickhead. No, what is his name? <laughs> Wigwag. No. Huh? Wigwag. Wigwag? Uh, what, what, kind of, what kind of bird? Is it a bird? It is bird, yes. What it's kind it's of bird? I mean, bird. big bird, little bird, well, small bird? I've seen bird. it in India many times. Uh, I could find out if I... 
Send you a copy in Yeah, do that. That would be great. And the point is, they are this, they are, they are talking. Uh, there is not not a discussion, but me is uh, um, by by means of uh, uh, you know anecdotes, small stories, right. uh, and so he's just giving some very uh, 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 love stories. Huh? Oh, and I see. There's different degrees of love. Uh -huh. huh? Right. And then they are starting to walk, and then they are walking through different uh, valleys. Oh yeah, um, sounds, sounds valley like of, a valley of search uh, and valley of uh, love and valley of understanding, valley of detachment and valley of death of God mm -hmm. and valley of development and, and so on until they reach to the to the to the court. Oh, sounds neat. Uh, it's very beautiful. Oh. I mean, because all the little <coughs> stories, only half page, one page, right? A very deep, deep uh, thought story. Ah, it's <laughs> <a very laughs> one story yeah. I just it just comes to my mind. Uh, it is um, that a beggar, or uh, just uh, a man, he is uh, in the sand, yeah, in the desert, and he is uh, digging. And um, uh, the king is passing by, uh, and he is looking, seeing that man digging. So he is taking off his uh, golden bangle and throwing it to the dust. Mm -hmm. you know? So after one week or one day or so, this man, the king is coming again, and still that, that beggar is, is searching. Still, the beggar is digging. Yeah, yeah. So the king asks him, "Fool, what are you doing here? Didn't you? Uh, are you not satisfied?" Huh? Mm -hmm. And then the, the beggar says, uh, "King, yesterday you threw you, you threw down your bangle, uh, and now I have found it, and this makes me so much thirsty for more that I cannot stop digging anymore." <laughs> Amazing. That's a good story. That's like rather like those. Uh, there's a lot of Sufi stories. Yes, <laughs> Idris Shah. Yes, I yeah. Well, he's he himself. Uh, I, mean, well, I don't he's know, collected a lot. Yeah. I don't. It's the collections yeah. that count. The collections you know? are nice. Yeah, yeah, I like the collections. I like any of those story teaching stories. They're, oh, yes. They always contain wisdom. You know, oh. I mean, and, and they're and they're beautiful. It's a beautiful form. Yeah. I, a little short story, a parable, or a tale. One or one story comes to my mind also from this um, this. Uh, Mullah Nasrian stories. Maybe uh, it also is containing something with that. Uh, I'm yeah. Because uh, we have uh, this proverb, uh, actually, this uh, is regarded to be a word of the prophet. Of the word of the prophet. Yeah. And it says, Die before you die. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that you, that, uh, before that kind of death which finishes your body, yeah. you could uh, detach from, from uh, materialism and egoism yeah. and such kind of thing. I go for that. Uh -huh. I think mean, it's a useful yeah, idea. Yeah. So that, that story is dealing with that point. Uh, that man, uh, he's called Nasruddin, he's a jokey figure. Uh, I don't know, like. Well, I've heard that name. Oh, you have heard Sure, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he, I've been exposed to something <laughs> of that stuff, yeah. He is uh, staying in his house and suddenly he says to his wife, look, I think I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> so his wife says, oh, you are fool. How you can think that you are dead? Look, your hands are warm. He said, oh, yes, you are, you are right. My hands are warm, so I'm not dead. <laughs> 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 then after some time, he thinks to go in the wood and to, to cut some, some wood, you know, for the fire or something. He goes to the, to the wood and as it is very cold, Outside, eh? so after some time of wood cutting, he, he finds out that his hands are cold. Right. So he thinks, oh, now I'm dead. Like doubt, yes, because dead people are not working. Gotcha. <laughs> he's lying down on the on the ground. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> then he's just thinking that he's dead, and suddenly some wolves are coming, ah. and they're taking his his uh, pony, ah. huh? and uh, he's uh, uh, facing the situation. And so he is uh, getting up from his from his uh, lying down and saying to the wolves, "You foolish wolves! If I would be alive, I would beat you." <laughs> 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 so 
these different types of uh, you know this uh, right uh, right I mass, like that mass development I like that yeah right Little changes of consciousness about yes, the same yes. idea and same point of view exactly yeah. good stuff yeah. I was in Kadian it's a very nice place in um, in India uh, near the Pakistani border my wife is from there and um, I have very much love for the town. It's a very beautiful town. It's uh, really, for me, it's such an amazing town because uh, when the um, subcontinent was divided, huh, mm-hmm. the the Muslims had to leave in the country. Yes. And there was such a butchering there on on all the sides. So That's what I understand. Was yeah. Horrible. Yeah. And our our movement, huh, they are taking apart from such things uh, because they have uh, nothing to do with such uh, violence and the right. butchering and, and so on. Uh, but uh, they had to go, they had to leave, and only some uh, 313 Dalvish uh, stayed there to keep the places uh, safe. I mean, the, 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 our holy places there, and uh-huh. had mosques and uh, uh, had nuclear garden. Right. And um, now then all these Hindus and these Sikhs and the different, you know, Sikhs is sure. the term. Yeah, they, they then entered the houses there and uh, they took the uh, property and everything and they lived there. It was a very dangerous time. Uh-huh. And nowadays it is like this, and this is uh, very strange. That, for example, mm, that uh, when the gurus of the Sikhs, hmm, uh, know, they have right. birthday, huh? sure. when they are starting chanting at night, huh? and on three different, uh, what do you call it, pujaras or something, like they have these temples. Then the whole night long they are uh, reciting. Right. By loudspeaker, not in the. <laughs> by loudspeaker. That all in the town you can listen. And when some, by chance, the Hindu people also celebrate certain things. For some, one Hindu says, well, you give me, I have to, I have got some, some boy also, I will give you one or two pieces, and then you hold the whole night long, you make, uh, you just chant it. Gotcha. So then they gather people, and then they start also, whole night long, from the sunset up to the morning. Sikhs and Hindus. Huh? Yeah. And so it is like a clash. I mean, you, right. I, I, yeah, I, I, I yeah. if you stay there for, yeah. for some time, yeah. you are getting crazy. You think, what is this matter in the town? All the sounds are saying, boo, boo, mm-hmm. from all sides. Yeah. And uh, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. the peace which is developed yeah. when the people are, are living in that kind of atmosphere without troubling each other. Yeah, well, it, it, it can very be strange. done. Very strange. It can be done. It's, it's unusual that it can be done. I don't oh. see any reason oh. why not. Yeah, I have friends. I have a few friends who are Sikhs, mm-hmm. who are converted, you know, who have become Sikhs. Oh, from that group, CEO, HO, what is this? Uh, well, they're, they're, H-O-C or something? Uh, well, it's the same, basically, they're, uh, it's, uh, let's see if I can remember who their teacher is, what his name is, the guru. Uh, uh, Triple Z? Uh, no. Not that. Yogi Barjan. Mm. Hello? Nothing. And I stayed there some, for t- uh, two and a half months, uh, from December to February. And, uh, oh my goodness. It's a flat. Hello? Hey. Hello? Uh-huh. Hello? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would like to. I'm talking to some people right now, uh, but yeah, I would like to do that. I'd like to see if I can get them to take a look at this thing on my lip and see if it's anything serious. Yeah, that's what I heard. I know, uh, that's amazingly great. <laughs> That'd be great. Sure. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. One of the guys in the band has a friend who's a doctor who's a dermatologist who just happens to be here in Essen, practicing in here in Essen. Mm-hmm. And while I was in England here at the hotel I was staying at, I picked up this weird, mm-hmm. you know, this this thing here, which is, I had some, it isn't very serious, it doesn't hurt or anything like mm-hmm. that. It's some kind of weird rash. I think I got it from the hotel, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, I mean, I, got, I actually just got it overnight. It was there. Um, uh, the day before yesterday, I didn't have it, and then yesterday I had it. You know, we came here, and mm. it's just, so he, there, it just happens that he's got a friend here who's a doctor, just totally coincidentally, and they, and he happens to be not above that. I mean, he's a dermatologist, mm. skin doctor to boot, so it's kind of you know sort of a lucky coincidence. So. Mm.
Yeah, right. Synchronicity. We were just exactly talking it. about that in the point. Uh, um, of course, you must have that question trigger in, in this. Oh yeah, sure. Uh, right. I've gone through that, uh, and um, uh, well, just for the point of uh, talking. You know, I mean, I'm not talking like small talk, but it's uh, fun. Uh, no, no, mm -hmm. no. What I'm thinking is that it, it is really like this. If you if you develop a certain uh, Uh, a certain view. Huh? Yeah. If you if you look in certain directions, such things happen. It, it, you, numberless. Huh? If you just the right, if you because just notice, you realize there's exactly endless you coincidence. You have turned on your mind like this, and then it must happen again and again. Oh, it does. Like well, it must happen here, no? <laughs> uh, it happens all the time. Right. I mean, it happens everywhere. Yeah, right. But you know. there's nothing about it. Not, no, nothing strange about it. No, it's, I don't think just, so. Just uh, your own, uh, you know. Well, it's everything that, that's in your mind is connected. You know, so everything that's in your mind is in your mind, you know, so it's all connected, I mean, obviously. So it's really a matter of seeing the connections, and Robert Anton Wilson is having this, he's having a meeting with his own consciousness, is what he's really talking about. He said, this is how my mind connects these elements, you know, I mean, that's what I read, you know. But, but, but above all, the best thing about, actually, that I like most about, like, the cosmic trigger of his stuff is that it's got a, a wonderful bibliography a great reading list in there, you know, I mean, there's a lot of good, I read some amazing books that, that he mentions briefly in passing in the Cosmic Trigger. Mm. It's, it, it, it has become, for me, a, a very good source book, you know. Oh. Yeah, see, that's the thing. It's a, yeah, I, I find, uh, so this uh, source book was a rough one. By Hillebrand, Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, sure, that's another one of those. Yes, it is great. Yeah, yeah it is great. And so that also yeah, is... Yeah. yeah, I like uh, anybody who does, who spends their time synthesizing elements, you know, bringing it together, all kinds of elements. And it, it's, yeah. uh, it gives you places to start, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and to go looking for your own resonance, resonance in your own life yeah. and stuff like that, yeah. I read, uh, there's an amazing book which he, which he mentions, which... Uh, Well, he, uh, let's see, in, in fact, in his Cosmic cosmic Trigger book, it's toward the end, it's one of the last chapters, he mentions this book by uh, the pair of, uh, by the McKenna brothers, a book called The Invisible Landscape, that talks about uh, the, it talks about the big countdown, um, he, he calls it the big countdown of, oh, of events. Yeah, mm. when, when uh, things uh, come to a big peak mm. in 2012, in 2012, which is about 30 years from now. Uh, oh, yeah. It's an amazing book. The book that he would talk, the, that, that book, the book called The Invisible Landscape, is just, boy, it is, a, it, yeah. Because these two guys are, uh, are they're, they are serious um, Western hard scientists, you know, mm -hmm. like really hard scientists, physicists, mm -hmm. anthropologists, uh, ethnobotanists, You know, I mean, these guys are yeah. serious, and uh, they they had that experience of going into the upper Amazon basin to do some experiments with psychedelics because of a theory which they had that had to do with uh, with uh, uh, an effect of, of uh, tryptamines, mm -hmm. uh, and they have a model of tryptamines where they. Their, their, their model was something along these lines, that the tryptamines, the way they interact with consciousness is that they, there is a, a donor electron pair in a tryptamine molecule which attaches to a, a receptor pair mm -hmm. of molecules at the bottom of the DNA molecule and causes them to spin and unravel and do this sort of thing, you know, sort of sets them into oscillation. They call that effect electron spin resonance which is something that's known about. And they were talking about this one particular hallucinogen, or one particular tryptamine, that produces a, they say, that produces a, a muscular mutation mm -hmm. in your mouth and face muscles mm -hmm. that makes it possible for you to produce visible airwaves, visible sound waves, in other words. Yeah, very far out shit. And so their thing was that they were going to go into the jungle, you know, and take this tryptamine and make an effort to, by producing visible sound waves and, and duplicating the electron spin resonance, the sound which you hear when you take tryptamine, a high-pitched nervous system sound, it, it appears inside your head, really. By duplicating that sound, they were hoping to create an exterior, um, visible 
hologram of an idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, very so much. very far out thinking, you know. And so they, in this book, I mean, they spent about half this book, you know, describing the nature of the science part of what it is they're trying to do and a certain amount of the philosophical background. And they have lots and lots of chapters of hard science. But the first half of the book is devoted to that. Then they talk about what happened to them when they tried this experiment. What happened was they went completely off into the zone. They both felt that they were they were in the presence of a um, of a a, fu a futuristic sort of insectile uh, anthropologist from the future or from hyper time. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, so from other time. Yeah. That was telling, that was giving them sort of instructions about what to pursue in their work, and that led them into a study of the I Ching. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the second half of the book, they talk about the I Ching, and they talk about the I Ching as a calendrical, a calendar. You wave in time. And their, their view is really, what they've done in this book is made an effort to describe what they consider the universe or reality to be, which is really an interaction between uh, the mind you know, and, and the universe, which is really not a place, but a time, but a moment. And in that moment in time, which is moving along, we're moving along in time, as it goes along, as it unravels in time, it's like, it is a fundamentally the 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 existence of a universe or the curve of a universe is something that unravels in time. It's not a place or a thing. It's it's an event, and the event is gains um, stuff. They call them. They describe them as quanta. Mm -hmm. uh, they describe like one quanta, for example, is the 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 uh, the conversion of the gaseous primordial Big Bang, you know, post-Big Bang mm -hmm. moment to uh, solid material is one quanta. From there to the appearance of life is another quanta. Uh, from the appearance of life to uh, vertebrates is another quanta. From vertebrates to language is a quanta. See? And the, each one is happening in half the time, I mean, each half time is accelerating, and it's accelerating yeah. at the rate of, at, at a exponential curve to the 64th power, oh, wow. which is quite, yeah. you know, quite a yeah. curve at the end, it gets pretty extreme, and we're in the last, we're in the last uh, 300 year cycle, mm -hmm. uh, or, or no, pardon me, we're in the last of a 40 year cycle, mm -hmm. we're in, right. Uh, that's that comes right after a 300 year cycle, after a several thousand year cycle, after so on and so on. Yeah. You know, so we're entering into the final spin, which they say is happening, going to happen in 2012. And in this book, they not only talk about it, but they prove it. You know, I mean, and they they're very rigorous about. Uh, they make a very definite effort to communicate clearly to the reader what it is they're trying to say. It's a hell of a book. I mean. Certainly one of the most significant books I've read yet. I mean, and it, I mean, if you believe it, you know, invisible landscape. It's called the Invisible Landscape. You can't get it anywhere. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't get it anywhere. Some teeny weeny publishing company in New York published it. Yeah. You might be able to find it, you know, in a catalog, yeah. and look, it's wor well worth hunting for. And uh, you know, maybe there are some copies around that can be got. It's definitely worth trying to get. When I found, finally found the publisher, I quickly ordered four or five copies and gave a few to my, my friends who would be most interested and kept a few around. You know, so it's like I know of the existence of a couple of copies of this book. You know, I've, I've talked to people for years now, for a couple of years about this book because it's truly one of the most remarkable pieces of work I've seen. And see, this, this exper experience, this experiment of theirs in the Amazon jungle, this happened back in 1970. And they've been working basically ever since then on these ideas, you know. And that this this book is the publication of their, uh, you know, their work. Do you mean that it is that type of uh, expanding uh, level which, which which comprises more most of uh, what you have seen? Because it's it's I've read that uh, that Kruger and uh, 
Right. Well, he describes the book. He oh, describes yeah. that mm -hmm. one, that thing, and that one, one chapter. He really describes more or less their model of what's mm -hmm. going to happen. Mm -hmm. Only what I'm briefly, but he doesn't uh, go into much detail. Mm -hmm. What I'm, what I'm, uh, what I'm thinking, and what what is my experience also that uh, it, it is uh, quite possible that with a certain effort you you might prove this or that. Yeah. And uh, I, I could imagine that that if you if you find some some. Uh, Uh, other scientists who, sure. who are just uh, <laughs> some other line of thought, and then they they prove the different thing. Oh yeah, I I just think I mean yeah. Oh no, I I don't you know it's I don't subscribe to one theory over another. You know I mean it's just fascinating you. It is right. It's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hi. Hello. 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 Oh great! And uh, yeah, uh, uh, Bill's got his doctor friend here, uh, who's going to come up and uh, visit me in about a half hour, I guess. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, <coughs> far out. Oh, far out. Out of sight. Okay. Bye bye. Okay, everything is working out fine for me. All I've got the gift for you. A gift? If you take it, <laughs> you don't take it just for me. Right? Oh, too much. I'll take it. It's uh, my pattern, huh? That word? That's a good word. <laughs> Because uh, what I'm thinking is, if man is doing something, it must be limited. Because man, oh yeah, the utmost could be. Uh, man uh, is only man. Yes. And uh, though his way of selecting uh, might be uh, due to certain, always certain attachments, and, it's uh, always limited. Yes. But I like uh, unless unless you're not yourself. <laughs> yeah, I'm always in. This is this is what I'm what I'm what I was saying to Pete Townton. Therefore, I wanted to cite you your poem. You remember when I started? Oh yeah, yeah, please do. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I I have no tune for it, and I don't want to sing it because it is not a it's not a poem. Actually, it is kind a kind of. Uh, Or you say limerick or little, little, right. or such, you know, such type of uh, once upon a time song. So. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I just said it. I just put it down on the bar. Sure, go ahead. Yeah, it is. Once upon a time, I met the who, and I asked Peter, "Tell me, who are you?" Mm -hmm. He said, "What well, think you really? Who am I?" I said, "Ask Allah, who took life for Christians' wife." Mm -hmm. It really happened. It really is no. It is no. It is no poem. It is. It is. It is true. <laughs> I just went to see him, and uh, I, I just asked him, "Are you really yourself?" So he was. He was. Uh, he was amazed. He didn't know what to say. <laughs> well, <laughs> Therefore, it's one of those uh, things. What can you say? Uh, no, I, I like him because uh, you know. Why shouldn't I like him? But uh, <laughs> it's just a matter of of. Uh, of uh, I was told later on by the by the design man, man who makes this moderation to model. How, could you call it moderation? Mean? No, talk show, talk uh, master. What? How do you call it? Yeah, that's Ooh, good. Moderation, I understand. Moder uh, yeah, that's a good word. So <laughs> he told me that that when he came, when when this uh, Mr. Townsend, when he came from the plane, huh, and he was like in the icy, in the icy atmosphere. There was nobody, nobody approaching him, mm -hmm. and everybody was seeing him. <laughs> and so he he must have been too much, uh, you know, cool. Uh, yeah, that, well, that can yeah, happen. It can happen. I don't I don't get that kind of. Uh, It's very very difficult. Uh, uh, no, I don't get that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah. It's probably difficult for him. It's not difficult for me. I mean, I don't. Uh, I'm not isolated by. You enjoying it? I'm not famous. I'm not that famous. You know what I mean? Like you, you, I'm just famous enough. We were People sitting down, then that that moderator, I called him moderator. He was saying, "Oh, are you dead? Are you what is that? Are you, are you dead?" Yes. Uh, I said, oh, "Well, my name is Adadila." <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, mm. actually, I I only came to talk to you. I, I, this interview thing, you know, this not my not my not my point. This is my work. I'm not. Uh, I'm not a journalist. And You're a visitor, you. is what you are. Yes, yeah, so, uh, I feel like a stranger. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Uh, I am a stranger. Do you do you know? Uh, by the way, uh, this this uh, saying. Uh, I mean, I, I listen very well to to you go to heaven record. Uh -huh. uh, that um, uh, this idea of feeling of being a stranger. It is actually a mystical uh, proverb in Islam. Yeah. You, you know this. Yeah. Uh, from the Sufis, that, that you, you live like a stranger in the world. Right? Yeah. We are from we are in this world, but not from this world. Right, we're not. Uh, right, we're in this world, not of it. Right. Yes, yes, yes. 
Right. Well, that's, I mean, that seems obvious, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's very, very difficult to do. Uh, well, uh, one of the, one of the oh, it's, kind of, it's kind of hard to help. Well, it depends on what society you're in, too. I mean, it depends on how, on how you're moving through. It depends on how you're moving through it, you know. Like, for us, our experience as the Grateful Dead, you know, the Grateful Dead mm. has been a very specific kind of experience for us. Mm. It's really been kind of, uh, been far out, frankly, you know. Mm. Uh, it, 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 it's just put us in a position of kind of being perpendicular to almost everything, you know what I mean? We're sort of, we're coming in at a peculiar angle to almost every experience we bump into. And so it's just in the course of traveling, you know, we're, we're a little bit outside of everything. It's very strange, you know. But it's, it's made, I mean, it, it, uh, that has only made us more ourselves, you know. Mm. That's the effect that it has, it seems to have, and it, you know. You know, this, uh, <laughs> when in 1976, something like that, no, 67, uh, there was this um, Andy Warhol's uh, Gagar Anagrand, you might have seen or heard sure. this Gagar. There was a song of a, a German girl, actually, her name is the same like his, uh, Nicole. Nicole. Nicole, I remember uh -huh. Nicole. And she uh, sang a song, uh, I'll Be Your Mirror. You know that song? What's the song? I'll Be Your Mirror. Oh, yeah. Huh? I'll be your mirror. I'll be your mirror. Right. And uh, when I was uh, one year or two years after living in one uh, in one house, I was writing this uh, line. Huh? Actually, on a mirror. Huh? <laughs> in our, in our kitchen, mirror. we had some uh, some uh, yeah. you know, so many people living in our house, and they uh, I mean uh, we were living in their house, whatever it is. Right. So I wrote it. And then an American GI who was uh, drop out, uh, uh, a good friend of mine, he came and he saw that line, and uh, he looked very punishing to me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and he, he took a, a lipstick or something like this, and he wrote very big letters, tongue on it, tongue, tongue, tongue on 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 on, on that line. <laughs> and now, more than more than uh, five years afterwards, I found out that this I.B. Yamira is actually also a word of the Holy Prophet. Mm -hmm. of, uh, of Islam. Oh, really? Yes. Yeah. He, he said that a believer is a mirror of, of, of his believer, of his friend. Eh? So, it's um, uh, very strange how, <laughs> how certain uh, uh, realities... Uh, with Metaphors. Uh, well, if, if you make it your nature, mm -hmm. it is a kind of reality. Yeah, I and guess they are kind of realities, I guess. If it, is, if, it's not a if it is not an experience like this, that you say, oh, God, this experience is very nice, and now uh, let me see what it else will turn on the second program or the third program mm -hmm. or whatever. Like Dan Dess is doing this in, in his, uh, in his uh, performances. Oh, really? You, you have never seen I haven't seen him lately. Oh. Oh, he, he, he's doing that. He's starting with all, and now, he's, now you turn on the second level, and now you turn on the third level. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> like this, he is just uh, making his, uh, his way of expanding uh, his mind. He's demonstrating it by by giving uh, the experience of it in a certain way by explaining the different levels of uh, of life that such kind of a dead you need to chair actually but then after some <coughs> time you find out that that it, uh, it might not be a chair, it might be a throat for you because yeah. you feel like thing and then after some time it might be a, like a, a hump of arms <laughs> you are feeling too much biting your <laughs> yeah. so it's, it is developing uh, according to your uh, uh, humbleness. Uh. Right. According to, 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 to the um, way of accepting um, well, the, well, uh, all how many how many levels you have access to? Yeah, right. Yeah. How many yeah. Level, right. Except, accepting your all encompassing nature. Yeah, that's mm. a good one. <laughs> that would be good. I wrote a very nice story uh, in the place um, uh, just to tune you in in that in that uh, in that atmosphere, I first sing a song for you, uh, <laughs> which I also wrote in that song, and, mm -hmm. and, and just to give you some idea. Kadian, you town of Elvishes, you are you are so near to me. Kadian, you town of loving ones, you are you are so dear to me. And where I'll go, it will be Kadiyam. And where I'll be, it will be in Quran. And where I'll be, it will be in Quran. And where I'll go, it will be Kadiyam. 
Mm. And then some long uh, love being verses or something. Yeah. And in that town, which I'm, uh, many songs I have written about the town. Uh-huh. I was running through the streets, I was weeping. <laughs> I could not. Yeah. It was too much interesting. The first time when I uh, touch, uh, when I was there and uh, rec- uh, making a, an English uh, uh, line, English poem. Mm-hmm. Um, then it, uh, it was. Uh, Islam is my desire to pray this is my creed. I'll walk into the fire of Rafa Sita Street. Mm. Muhammad is al Hadi and he is all sacred. He testifies by Mahdi who brought the faith to earth. Mm. Um, I found my love in Rabba. Allah gives me Iman, my heart is making sadda, I'll die in Qadiyan. Mm. Where is my journey ending, if not in being lost, in Allah who is sending his love to us, my Lord. And uh, there's some words, that was the town of uh, our our people in Pakistan, and Qadiyan is the town in India, India they're divided. Ah, so I'm saying I'm running between these two towns, ah. like a lover who is coming to a bride and uh, uh, he is falling in love with that bride and then the bride says, um, uh, do you like to see a more beautiful girl? I say yes. Then he says, you go to my sister. And then I go to the your sister and uh, she's more beautiful. Ah. And then he says, oh, do you like to see a more beautiful girl? I say yes. And then he is sending me to, to her sister and then ah. I'm coming again to that girl ah, and she's right. like, uh, <laughs> like this Back and going and between these two towns. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. And there I wrote one story. Hmm? Now I just want to, want to if you don't mind, um, this, uh, when I wrote that last uh, line, huh, when it, it was coming to my mind, eh, go slowly, slowly, and I was running to the street and I tried to sing it, eh, and I started weeping. Yeah. <laughs> like, because uh, there is a gathering of about 200,000 people, huh, and uh-huh. I had to recite it there, huh, uh-huh. at some Jeez. point of mine. Uh-huh. And then I was thinking, oh my goodness, I'm so much in love with that. Uh, uh, Allah, I'm so much in love with the town that I, I cannot uh, <laughs> uh, keep it for me. I have to weep. How can I recite it for two hundred thousand people? That's the perfect moment. You know, that's the moment. That's the truth. You know, that's that's when you would hope to be able to recite whatever you could recite. You mm-hmm. know? And then for three days, I was running with that, pregnant with that song, and uh, then after all, I was able to to do. It. That's a lovely. Uh, that's you lovely. can you can keep it if you like. I, I'll scarcely remember it, but I'll remember the, I'll remember the idea. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm-hmm.